Hey everybody, this is Joe with Speedway Motors Tech Talk. And one of the things that we are most excited about on our C10 project is installing this cool new gauge cluster from New Vintage USA. And these things come in a bunch of different styles. We're really excited about the one that we picked. It's got kind of a muscle car look to it. And super jazzed to put this in. But one of the things that we need to figure out first, and this is a question that we get asked a ton, is what fuel level sender does it take? How do we make the fuel level sender that I have work with the gauge cluster? And so we're gonna talk through a few ways of figuring that out. The concept here is pretty simple. Basically, all you need to do is match the resistance range of the gauge with the resistance range of the sender. And this will be expressed in ohms. And for example, this gauge is zero to 90. And what that means is zero is empty, empty is always first, and it's 90 ohms then full. And what that looks like on the sending unit, you know, there are various different styles of sending units. Some of them, the float is inside a tube. Some of them have an arm like this. But these are a couple Speedway Motors sending units that we're going to be working with here. And basically, the concept on the sending unit is the float will be at the top, floating on the surface of the fuel when it's full. And then the float will be at the bottom when your tank is empty. And it will read then different resistances accordingly. And so you just need to make sure that the sending unit that you have is paired with the gauge that you have. The scenario that we encounter quite often is that someone will have purchased this cool new gauge set and they have no idea what sending unit is in their car. Well, there's a couple ways to figure that out. One is we have an article on the toolbox at speedwaymotors.com where NVU has this great chart showing all sorts of original fuel level senders, OE applications, and what their resistance ranges are. So because this kit is custom designed to work with a 67 to 72 Chevy truck, the zero to 90 would match with the original fuel level sender. But what if something has been changed? Your old car, classic truck, the tank has been replaced, the sender's been replaced, it's no longer the original. Well, there's a way to test that and we're gonna show you what that looks like. Now, the easy way to do this is when you order your new gauge, you just order a new sending unit, the resistance range will be expressed on both parts and you just match them up and it'll be easy. Now, if you wanna reuse the sender you already have or find out if you need to order a new sender, there's a way to test that. Assuming you have access to the sending unit itself, you can hook up a multimeter set to ohms, set to read resistance, hook up the negative probe to chassis ground or to the, the sender itself, and then hook up the positive probe to the post where the gauge wire would hook up. Now this one is in the empty position right now, the float's at the bottom, and it reads 240 ohms of resistance. And then if you swing the float to the top, which would represent the full position, and hook up your probes, it reads 33 ohms of resistance. So that makes this a 240 to 33 ohm sending unit. Now remember, we have a zero to 90 on our gauge, so this is the wrong sending unit for our gauge. We're gonna check this one and, and see if this is the right one. All right, we've got another universal arm style sending unit here that we can test, see if this one will work for us. So again, we're in the empty position with the float at the bottom. This one measures zero ohms at the empty and full, it measures 90. So this is our zero to 90 sending unit that we need to use with our zero to 90 gauge. Now obviously we have kind of an ideal scenario here. We have easy access to the tank, easy access to the sending units. It's also possible if your car is all assembled to check this at the gauge. You just unhook the sending unit wire from the back of the gauge and then measure it in the same way. Put your, your ground to a chassis ground and then use the positive probe to check resistance at the gauge. You will need to manipulate the float level by actually adding and removing fuel from the tank. So it's a little bit trickier, but it still works. Now, there's a really great tech article on the toolbox at speedwaymotors.com that was created by the folks at NVU talking about all sorts of different scenarios that you might encounter and how to determine what the best fuel level sender is going to be for your application. So we encourage you to check that out before you order anything up. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to let us know. And thanks for watching.